Guys, welcome to the InsideSoCal.com slash UCLA video blog. This is John Gold with the Los Angeles Daily News. Sammy Strong. Daily the Bruin. No longer Daily News. Such authority. <laughs> Thanks, Chaz. Yeah. Uh, Jonah, Chaz, you know, you guys know us as the, the two funny fat guys. Keep like. voting for Chaz Bono. He's still on Dancing with the Stars. No run heat. Okay, so we're, uh, we're, we're talking uh, UCLA football coming off a 27-19 win over Oregon State in Corvallis. God, I, I wasn't there. Uh, you were there. I, I was to, there. I had to cover the Angels for the Daily News. Yeah. Uh, but we we were talking before this. We got some interesting. Uh, you know, I got to see a little more of the the whole field. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's no there's no uh, substitute for being there. So. No, there's not. And that's something I want to talk about. What I saw versus what you saw. Okay. What I saw was a concentrated offensive effort uh, in the first half to open things up. To, to you know, there was the the reverse pass from Josh Smith that ended up being incomplete. I think he just should have run it. I mean, he, he seemed to have the corner. That was the that was the first uh, more or less trick play we've seen this season. Pretty much. And yeah. I was gonna yeah. I was gonna ask Coach Newhouse before the trip. Where when are we gonna open up the play? Yeah, they practice that kind of stuff, and, and you know, obviously, you, you know, you, you do those kind of plays when you feel like you have the opportunity. And so. who knew Josh Russell was left-handed? He I did. He started I've been watching him do this. As he started coming around the other end, I'm like, what is he gonna do? <laughs> And then all of a sudden, just whips it with his left hand. Yeah, it was kind of a duck, a little bit of a duck. But uh, you know that you know we saw that we saw the Jordan James end around for a four yard touchdown. We saw the Josh Smith, uh, you know, the the wheel route for sixty two yards. We saw yeah, we saw things open up in the first half. Yeah, and then they tightened up. You know, like a like a like a a bad MC. You know, they they really just kind of clammed up. What what do you what was it like watching that? You know, from from your vantage point. Yeah, well. What killed him was the was the punt return for touchdown. We'll get into that later. Because, uh, you know, at that point they could have been a little, if they still were clinging on to, what, 21 to 3, 3 at instead of 21 to 10, they could have maybe been a little more conservative. And they still got away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think they maybe should have opened up the pass a little more in the second half. But at the same time, they, uh, you know, like the wheel route and the end around and things like that, those plays don't work unless you're given it on that read option four or five times, you know. I understand that, and my contention is more so about the identity that Rick Neuheisel uses to, to describe this team and wants to use to describe this team. I, I think it's a, kind of a false identity. You know, he describes them kind of at, you know now as a power team, or he describes them you know as a as a as a running run oriented team. Okay, but, but just because you choose to run the ball, just because you have a, a level of success running the ball. Doesn't to me make you a run oriented team. You know, okay, I think I think if it takes away from the pass, at some point you have to have more balance. But if you look at if you look at the eleven passes they threw in this game, as opposed to the you look at a game last year, I think the passing game has come a long way. I think you know he talked about marrying the pass and the run game, which I think they've done. Maybe not to the extent that you wanted them to, or maybe the fans, shotgun wedding. The fans wanted them shotgun to. shotgun wedding. But they're definitely throwing the ball with more consistency than they did last year. Last year it was just like, holy cow, what do you like? Yeah, but if you don't throw, it's almost like if a tree falls in the woods and you don't hear it. If a team has a good pass game and they don't throw, is it a good pass game? You know, they threw 11 times with Richard Brio. He had seven completion. But they this threw is, the ball 60 something, whatever times against Arizona State last year and got cream. Yeah, because they had no running game at all in that game. I'm saying it has to be, it has to be less predictable. And, and at a certain point, it has to be a, a an effort to use all, you know, a field is is technically, I want to say it's what, it's 50 yards by 100, so essentially 5,000 square yards or whatever. Math like 52 is not, yards by 100. It's something like that. Okay. It's not like I played it. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't, whatever. Uh, you threw me off, Stephen Hawking. I don't know the number. <laughs> uh, so you have this whole field. They seem to only really care about using the seven feet in front of the, the offensive line and the span of the offensive line. I mean, it really is a little tiny box that, that they okay. choose to really exploit. But when you have a Randall Carroll, a Josh Smith, a Shaq Evans, a Nelson Rosario, and I'm not saying that means go deep. I'm saying when it's such a narrow, uh, you know, when you're only attempting to control that narrow little box, that other team really only has to plan against that box. Okay, but John, John you watch... Uh, if you watch, I watched the Rick Newhouse East Lake Football Weekly show last night, by the way, which okay. is, you know, eh, it's okay. But the part where they, the part where they Keep break going. down, the part where James Washington and him break down film yeah. is actually really interesting. Yeah, because, oh, that is. Uh, he shows two separate plays. One of them is the wheel route where Josh Smith goes 68 yards up the field. 62. 62, whatever. And the next one is a similar looking play uh, near the goal line. 
and you see the safety the first time, he's committing to the run. Yeah. The second time, he drops back to cover Smith, and I don't even remember who it was now. Ricky Marbury or something is open in, in the crossing. Yeah. So, I think, you know, you can say it's predictable or whatever, but... Like I said, you know, they hit Josh Smith for 62 yards. In the game. first half they did. Yeah. In the second half, when all they did was run, it, Oregon State, you know, I'm not saying Oregon State was shutting them down because they weren't. Okay. But at a certain point, you know, you're not going to be playing Oregon State. Okay, but but regardless, it's a win on the road in the Pac-12, which haven't been plentiful around here in the past. Yeah, two in the New Highland era before this right. game. One to a, uh, one over a 1-11 team, one over uh, an 0-12 team. And we could talk about the offense all day, but the, I think the – unit that won in the game was the front seven. Do you really? Game. Yeah. Did, why do you think that? They got a good push. They, Did they? They held their... Dayton yeah. Jones didn't have a tackle. Okay, well, Dayton Jones isn't the whole defensive line. Yeah, but, you know, you look at the... Cassius Marsh had two tackles. Damien Holmes had two tackles. Carter had two. O, you know, Oa Digazua had one. They were putting more pressure on Mannion than they were against... Yeah, against, against an offensive line with two walk-ons. Okay, well, it's easy. Hitting, to... How many sacks did they get? I don't know. None. Okay. Still, I, I just don't agree. Look I mean, at, you're how, playing, many, you're how many rushing yards did Oregon State? Have? Yeah, but Oregon State was on their backup running back. Their first running back, you know, was hurt and dominant. This guy was was an average runner. I, I, I think you're giving him way too much credit. I think you have to really look at, at the fundamental issues that that are going on up front. This is a unit that that we thought was going to be among the best in the Pac-10. You know, we hyped up Dayton Jones. I hyped him up. I'll take credit for it, or you know, blame for it, whatever. I'm getting, you know, guys on my blog are making it seem like I. You know, called him the Heisman Trophy winner. Okay, but how many times did they make a tackle in this game that they didn't make in the previous three games? Yeah, that's fine. They played better. But, you know, playing better than awful still means playing maybe... It means a win! 27-19! Over a team that beat that, that lost to Sac State you and can't, got you shut can't, out. You can't pick who you're playing. Yeah, you can't pick who you're playing, but you can grade a performance sure. on a whole, not just win or loss. Sure. I'm not saying that they're ready to go beat Stanford, but I think given to what the conversation we were having last week, there was some market improvement on the defensive side. You know, I, the, the improvement to me came in, in two ways. Rotation. We saw more Eric Kendricks at important times. We saw Sean Westgate at close to 100%, 90 to 100% the entire time. What happened? He gets a pick. He's a vocal leader on the field. You know, Sean Westgate takes a lot takes a lot of heat from UCLA fans, and, and to some extent, I understand. You know, I understand. I could have picked you know, that ball off. That, I don't know if you could have picked that. Ball I think off. I could have. How far could you have run the ball right afterwards? Now, so no, just mean okay. <laughs> Next week, inside UCLA video, Sam Strong, John Gold, forty yard dash. Oh my god! We know who's going to win this. I don't know. I, fat you, versus fat. You might. You might. You could be. You could be right. I'll beat you, and then I'll die. Regardless, on the field. Yeah, he, let's go. he was in the right spot to make the play, yeah. but. Court Mannion went like this, looked at him, and then threw the ball. <laughs> yeah. You know, but but I think what, what we're seeing now is you see that the gap between A and B uh, at this school has, has shortened. Uh, I think a product of that is the recruiting. I think a product of that is, is also, you know, getting Dietrich Riley on the field last year. Who, you know, Dietrich had a vicious hit on that too. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was, was that Wheaton? Nasty. I want to say that was Wheaton. Yeah, Marcus uh, You know, so... We're looking at a team that, you know, Dietrich Riley got some run last year. Now he's in a much more important position. Uh, you have Cassius Marsh, who started some games last year, important position. Uh, you know, even guys like Ayuta Tepa, who, who missed a lot of last year. You yeah. know, that's a guy who... Epinesa, too. Cieli Epinesa, Cieli Epinesa, I should say. He had a big play. And you're looking at, 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 at a defense now that seems from A to B, from, from first string to second string, that gap that was so wide you know, for New Heisel's first few years, has seemed to, to shrink. But I'll say what you just said. Oregon State's not very good. Yeah. So. And, and so now you're facing Stanford. Now you're now you're facing Ooh. all world, Andrew Luck, second greatest quarterback in Stanford history. And if Mannion's, John gonna, if Mannion's looking like this and throwing the ball, Luck is yeah. not as Luck has like 11 eyes. He's like one of those spiders with eight eyes. He can <laughs> see the entire field. And, and this, you know, Andrew Luck comes at a pretty bad time for UCLA. Reason number one. Two weeks one, to prepare. Two weeks to prepare. You give Andrew Luck two days to prepare, I think he'll be ready. And two two weeks. weeks to prepare. I literally feel like he'll just fly. He'll have a magic carpet and fly all over the field. Two more weeks to grow that beard. <laughs> Who wins? Him. In, in everything his in look, life? His well, look no, just in life yours. he wins, right? Yeah, well, his look better than yours in July at Pac-12. <laughs> so I'm scared to see what it's at now. True, true. Grizzly Adams guy. Uh, no, but, but you know, you do that, but, but now your, your defensive backfield is pretty banged up. Sheldon Price, knee, Dalton Hilliard, Hilliard, shoulder, Jamie Graham coming back from a knee. Tony died, general soreness. General soreness. Which we found out was stingers, yeah, well, which not, doesn't qualify as general soreness to me, but whatever, go on. Yeah, just shifty, <laughs> you know. Uh, 
And then, uh, you know, so, so it's, a defense, it's a defensive backfield that's going to be pretty banged up. Tevin McDonald. Tevin McDonald, you know, I thought Tevin McDonald had a pretty good showing today, or, or on Saturday. His, yeah. first, his first major action. You know, is there a way to shut down Andrew Luck? No. Nope. In Stanford? No. Nope. Okay, this is a guy who only passed for 140, I want to say 141 yards last year. He had 63 rushing yards. He was held pretty much in check, and yet they still won 35. Doesn't nothing. matter. He's a game manager. Yeah. And UCLA doesn't do well against game managers. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, now, you know, speaking of game management, this is going to be pretty much the last thing we talk on besides the epic uh, Twitter war of 2011, which we'll that? get to. Okay. No, we'll get okay. to it later. <laughs> Too antsy. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to beat him. Anyway, go on. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the end of that first half. And you're watching the game from home. Obviously, what, what, what we're talking about right now is, is UCLA at the end of the first half gets the ball back on their own 20-yard line with 141 left. There's two schools of thought. Number one school of thought, you be aggressive, you play to win, you have three timeouts. Three timeouts in a two-minute situation, you might as well have five minutes. Or you, know, you can you take a knee and you go into the locker room with a 21-3 lead. Yes. You don't do both, which is what they tried to do. Exactly. So, 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 you know, so what happens, run up the middle, run up the middle first down. You know, what was it? Uh, nine yard pass to, to Nelson Rosario. All, all of a sudden, that sequence right there, those three plays, there's 42 seconds. Started with 141, not a minute o'clock left, or, you know, a minute o'clock run. At that point, you gotta just sit on the ball and go and lock it. Uh, but you should have sat on the ball exactly. to start. Okay, so, so New Heisel goes into the locker room, and, or he comes into the post game and says he took the blame for not telling Jeff Locke. That was cool. I thought that was cool. Except he had a timeout, he had three of them. I, Why not call the timeout if you want to play that? Way? I don't think I don't think the decision was cool. I think it's cool that he took the blame when his team picked him up. You're absolutely right. All that's fine. Looking forward, this has to be a concern. Sure. That that miss that game mismanagement is going to cost them at some. And he kind of blamed it on someone coming down to the field from the box. That's no excuse. No, and and you know I think at a certain point. Rick Neuheisel needs to, it's not about opening it up, it's not about conservative versus non-conservative. It's about taking opportunities when they're given to you. Yeah. 141, three timeouts is an opportunity to score. I, I come from the, the, the school of thought that you, you always play aggressively. Aggressively doesn't mean throwing 95 yards. You know. and I come from the school of thought that if you have an 18-point lead, you go into the locker room with an 18-point lead. Yeah, but you're from ultra-conservative Utah. That, that would be how you think. I'm from Liberty, Orin, California, Orin man. Hatch. Throw deep. It's my neighbor. <laughs> Orin Hatch is You're Orrin Hatching. Okay, so uh, awful. So, but, you know, it's it's committing to, to scoring football. And UCLA... Through four games, we're not seeing that. We're seeing that kind of grind them out, shorten the clock. We want to play our possession game. I don't think you need to do that against San Jose State and Oregon State. Is it a confidence issue? Is it a faith issue? Uh, you know what? I'll leave it at this. They beat San Jose State and they beat Oregon State with their game plan. And even though they're terrible. Sam Strong throwing heat, game. apparently. <laughs> throwing heat. Well, we're getting the wrap it up sign. So we I, are getting the wrap I will it up say, sign. Uh, follow at DB Sports on Twitter and unfollow Briho1216 <laughs> on Twitter because we're racing to a thousand followers and we're gonna figure out some sort of bet for the first one to get there today. Call me when you have 1800. <laughs> Stop. It. See you, brother. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks so much for watching uh, Los Gordos um, uh, de American Football. And vote for Chaz on Dancing with the Stars. He's still in. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching.